Between the stars, in the interminable blackness where the warmth of the sun no longer reaches and billions of years have passed in silence due of the oldest machines on Earth drift alone. For decades, Voyager 1 and 2 have been our spacecraft, silent agents of the unknown. Their ancient instruments still whisper home over such vast distances that it takes nearly a day for a single message to arrive. However, recently, those whispers changed. The signals began to show anomalies patterns that defied the rules of physics, objects moving in ways with no natural explanation and an ominous suggestion that we might not be the only ones navigating the deep. Voyager 1 saw it first, and for a brief time, it appeared to be a solitary mystery. But then, Voyager 2, traveling a completely different path millions of miles away, detected the exact same phenomenon. That was when fear became a real threat. This was neither an error nor random. Something was out there, something systematic, something intentional. And each Voyager had just established its presence. It began like many mysteries of deep space do, with what looked like nothing at all, a faint flicker buried in Voyager 1's stream of telemetry. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory initially dismissed it as background noise stray static from cosmic rays, particles generated constantly. Yet, when Dr. Eleanor Kara, a mission specialist, carefully examined the anomaly, she discovered something that did not fit the profile. This was not a coincidental blip. It was a reflection a subtle echo of light that appeared to move. And the trend wasn't random, it curved, it accelerated, and it didn't change course as if controlled by something unseen. Voyager's plasma sensors quickly confirmed what her eyes had told her. The object was modifying its course with deliberate intent. To put it simply, this wasn't how space debris behaves. It was like seeing a drone in the middle of the sea out of place, unnatural and clearly designed to serve a purpose, said Carlo Romero, a systems analyst. The team began eliminating possibilities. A comet without a tail or sublimation. No, not an asteroid the trajectory was to perfect. Not dust it was coherent. The only explanation that remained was disturbing. Something was guiding this object through the void. While investigating whether Voyager 2's anomaly might be a fluke, the spacecraft traveling far from its twin transmitted information that froze the room. It had recorded nearly identical readings, magnetic fluctuations, plasma shifts, and a steady, albeit faint, pulse signature matching Voyager 1's anomaly. This cross-confirmation eliminated the last refuge for doubters. It couldn't be a bug in the software. It wasn't a hardware malfunction. To satellites, operating independently and separated by millions of miles, had witnessed the same phenomenon. M.K. Fontaine, an analyst at the European Space Agency, compared it to two lighthouses catching the same flash of light. NASA quietly escalated the situation to a Level 3 alert a classification reserved for events with no current scientific explanation. No longer was it just about an object. It was about an event a coordinated space movement that seemed to be spreading across vast distances. The meaning was abundantly clear. What was taking place outside was not random, and it was large enough to be spotted from multiple angles at once. Patterns began to emerge as telemetry poured in patterns that made the anomaly infinitely more complex. There was more than one object. There were 305 of them. Each moved precisely in relation to the others, keeping their distances and trajectories as if bound by an invisible grid. In the natural order of space, small velocity differences cause objects to drift apart over time, yet these stayed locked in formation. Scientists described it as a flock of birds or a school of fish only these were metallic, silent, and gliding through the vacuum with an elegance that defied all known mechanics. There was no heat, no decay, no telltale signatures, no erratic spins, just coordinated, deliberate motion. Stranger still, the Voyagers picked up rhythmic plasma pulses from the swarm. Each pulse repeated at predetermined intervals, indicating not only movement but communication. 
Dr. Serena Patel of Caltech noted the accuracy of the patterns, comparing them to a language deliberate, measured, and far to order to be the product of chance. The next revelation pushed the discovery beyond imagination. Doppler shift analysis showed that a significant number of these objects were moving at speeds impossible not just for human technology, but for any known method of travel. There were no flares from engines, no exhaust trails, nothing to suggest traditional thrust. Instead, they appeared to be manipulating the very fabric of space, gliding as if riding invisible currents. Some traveled beyond the escape velocity of the Milky Way itself, an achievement far beyond any propulsion system humanity has conceived. Philosopher of physics Alan Arrays described it not as flight, but as surfing using the very medium of space as the propulsive force. It wasn't ion drive. It wasn't nuclear propulsion. It wasn't anything we could build. And yet, it was happening before our eyes with two of our oldest space travelers as witnesses. By this stage, the fear wasn't just about what these objects were. It was about what they were capable of and what it meant for humanity to suddenly realize they existed. As NASA's deep space analysts worked to decipher the swarm's behavior, something curious began to unfold back on Earth. Amateur Radio Operators, hobbyists dispersed across a variety of continents, started reporting faint static rhythms unlike any other common source of disruption. These were neither background noise nor random bursts of cosmic noise. The pulses showed structure, a subtly consistent pattern, and they appeared to be nearly in sync with the hours when the voyagers were displaying their strongest anomalies. It was initially dismissed as coincidence. However, as more independent reports came from built-in configurations, backyards, and garages with salvage equipment, the alignment became too precise to ignore. Some operators captured faint harmonics buried within the noise, which suggested that the signals were bouncing off a high point in Earth's atmosphere, or even bleeding directly into our part of the electromagnetic spectrum from deep space. Intelligence agencies quietly noticed. Because they were aware of the occurrence, it became evident that if common people could spot these patterns, then other countries or entities with significantly more advanced listening instruments could as well. Confronted with the expanding list of anomalies, NASA and ESA convened a joint task force to investigate decades of stored mission data. The optimism was simple, find a precedent. If something like this had previously been observed, perhaps by Pioneer 10, Pioneer 11, or New Horizons, a hint might lie in what was now taking place. Groups poured over ancient logs of telemetry, plasma data, and readings from the magnetometer stretching back to the 1980s. However, all search results came up empty. There were no records of similar pulse structures, no previous encounters that even hinted at such precision and dimension. This absence of history led to a chilling thought. Maybe the covert swarm had always been there, lying dormant, only emerging when something specific, like Voyager's unique analog systems, triggered its presence. If that was the case, then these objects hadn't just appeared, they had been waiting. The question nobody wanted to say out loud was, waiting for what? As the swarm moved beyond the position of Voyager 1, another mystery emerged, this time from Voyager as a whole. Its decades-old attitude control system and guidance subsystem began rerouting data through previously untapped channels, active since Reagan's time. Engineers initially thought there was a problem, the natural degradation of an aging spacecraft. However, the changes were to clean, to purposeful. Voyager was bringing dormant memory banks back to life, avoiding conventional protocols and transferring via channels that no one had developed in decades. More alarming still, this behavior began shortly after one of the swarm's magnetic pulses washed over it. Could Voyager's systems have been altered by the signal? Or had the spacecraft simply modified itself, responding to something in the environment? Regardless of the reason, the one passive observer now appeared different, still working, still following instructions, but in ways that suggested it had been changed either accidentally or through design. The deeper analysts investigated, the more bizarre the plasma readings became. A new picture began to take shape. 
the swarm wasn't simply traveling, it was communicating. The pulse patterns carried harmonic intervals that eerily resembled those used in quantum entanglement experiments, the kind scientists used to transfer information instantly across vast distances. It appeared as if the 305 objects were nodes in a vast, invisible network transmitting data through the empty space itself. And the old, analog, slow, and quiet Voyager was the perfect ear for picking up whispers, its lack of modern digital noise making it uniquely capable of detecting signals others might miss. Was it coincidence that both Voyagers were in position to intercept this network at the same time? Or was it orchestrated? The unsettling possibility arose that these signals weren't meant for us at all, that we had simply stumbled into someone else's long-running conversation. However, an even more disturbing thought began to circulate in hushed conversations. What if they were aware that we were listening? What if they had already decided to respond? In the cold reaches beyond our solar system, where human presence is reduced to two old probes, it was now impossible to ignore the evidence. This was not a random encounter. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, separated by millions of miles, had both intercepted a phenomenon so large, organized, and deliberate that it defied every natural explanation we had been using for decades. 305 moving objects, perfectly arranged, communicating via pulses more structured than any natural signal, powered by a means of transportation that defied the laws of physics as we understand them. And somewhere in the middle of it all, Voyager was altering and adapting, as if becoming part of something else entirely. If any of these were probes, the questions became far more complex than science alone could carry. Who sent them? From where? And why avoid our solar system entirely? If they were natural, we were staring into an even deeper cavern. Mechanisms and forces that exist outside our physics with rules written into the universe we had only just glimpsed. Yet perhaps the most disturbing reality was that we might not be the intended audience for this display. We could have stumbled upon an ongoing conversation that had been transmitting long before humans first looked up at the night sky. And if they were now aware of us, if they had chosen to acknowledge that we were listening, then their initial response might already be on its way. In the ancient darkness, the line between observer and observed is thinner than we imagine. And maybe, just maybe, it is not we who have discovered them, but they who have decided that we are worthy of note.